Large language models have continued to impress over the last few years, especially in the last year or so. While performance, model size, architecture, and data sets have all had just massive improvements, one thing has stayed relatively the same during the last year or so, and arguably since the very beginning of LLM explosions, the maximum context length. Most models right now are about 2048. Some are up to 4K and very few anything beyond this. And when large language models first came out, I mean, it was numbers maybe like 512 or something like that, but the models themselves were far inferior. And also the actual model was just way smaller. And while models and techniques and everything have gotten much better, the context size really remains unchanged. Now, 2048 tokens is not nothing. This is a 2048 token example. Initially, this feels extremely large. If you have sufficiently intelligent models like GPT-4, for example, 2048 tokens can often feel pretty comfortable for a lot of tasks. But even then, one thing I keep personally running into is I want to use this intelligence for more than just, you know, simple prompts. I want to use it for just plain larger projects with a lot more going on. In this way, you're likely to want to be able to feed in a lot of data into the context without necessarily needing to fine tune the model. In a sense, you're kind of trying to replace a large context or you're trying to replace fine tuning a model with a very large context. Maybe I want a model to respond to emails or tweets or write code. I very quickly hit a wall with the 2048 token limit or even a 4K limit. I've also been trying to use large language models to help me parse through research papers and to just kind of keep an eye on research that's coming out, find similarities, find differences, find new issues and all of that. And here, very much especially, 2048 won't even get you through a single paper and most of the time, neither will 4K. Now, there are techniques and tricks to get around this by sort of summarizing and vectorizing information, but I have yet to see a really superb implementation that actually solves the problem in this way. Next, there are some models, of course, that have larger contexts. So the open source MPT models, uh, for example, come to mind, MPT30B going up to 16,000 tokens, sort of. Uh, or even the MPT Story Writer going up to 65,000 plus tokens with claims up to 84,000 tokens. Sort of. Because not all context windows are really equal. <laughs> Uh, I think there's a reason why even ChatGPT is still released with only up to 16K tokens, and that was relatively recently. Uh, for example, as you try to stretch out attention, we wind up having three just major issues. The first is, can you actually fit the attention into your available GPU memory? So this is either, a, this is a Boolean answer. It's yes or no. <laughs> either it fits or it doesn't. And as you continue to increase G, uh, the context size, the GPU memory is taxed uh, similarly. So the larger that, that memory, the much more, the larger the context or the memory, let's say for the model, the much larger your GPU memory requirement is. The second issue is, are you prepared for the exponentially increasing processing time for that greater amount of tokens in context? And again, this number two is what is conceivably stopping most models uh, from achieving very large context windows. The processing time uh, translates directly to training time. It translates directly to inference time, actually using the model, putting it into production. Uh, while time isn't the same as number one, number one is truly a yes or no, we can even do this. Number two is just, okay, but it's going to take forever. But then we get to number three. And number three is arguably the most important one of all. It's, is the quality any good? <laughs> In my tinkerings with MPT30B, for example, with a context window up to 16,000, I find that the model itself is of questionable artificial intelligence, <laughs> uh, likely at the baseline, uh, before we even try to use a larger context. For example, here we've got a hallucination, but typically even hallucinations will at least sort of make sense. This one is just kind of way out there, demonstrating that maybe this model can't even comprehend 
what a prime number is <laughs> or something. Using that larger context, we can instead utilize a context window as a way to really inform the model of our further upcoming prompts and kind of add intelligence, so to speak, or at least make this information that we want to be important and known by the model um, much more likely to be remembered. If it's in context, it, it's like much more like short-term memory or something. So for example, I've passed the entire long net paper into MPT30B, this paper I'll be referencing soon. And then I've asked a few questions. It, it does okay, and at least seems to be smarter than what I was relying on for the, you know, from the base model's intelligence. So it does seem clear that if you have a large context, you can at least probably make the model smarter on that specific type of context by just passing it into the context. I at least like this specific model, MPT30B, for this particular purpose, but even at a context of about 5,000 tokens for this long net paper, I was struggling to fit everything on an 80 gigabyte H100 GPU. And that's not even a third of that, you know, 16K limit. We're talking about just a 5K context window. We can save some space by running at 8-bit or even 4-bit, but this still only goes so far. We have this exponentially increasing problem, uh, but we can really only like sort of, you know, maybe half or a quarter, but that's it, <laughs> right? Beyond this, research from Stanford recently has suggested that even when you have a large context window that you can use and somehow process in a reasonable amount of time, the information in the middle of that context seems to be remembered much worse than the information, especially at the beginning, but also at the end, creating this sort of U-shape of quality of remembrance. Here, we can see examples of a variety of models tested, all showing the same sort of U-shape shape behavior, which suggests that this is just plain a problem with attention rather than, hey, MPT30B is, is no good, this specific one, but this other model with this large context window is great. So all three of those issues earlier are a problem for us. Attention works great up to 2K tokens. It can be stretched to 4K, eked out to 8, and pushed to the brink at 16. But that seems to be where we already are seeing diminishing returns in quality. But then also processing speeds and memory requirements to actually process the contexts is massive. Remember, MPT30B at even just a 5,000 context wants to slurp up 80 gigabytes of memory easily and then to generate a couple short sentences on an H100 at 16-bit takes a minute and a half. <laughs> so big contexts are just plain a problem. They take a ton of memory to use and a ton of time to process. We need something new, which is where we get things like LongNet from Microsoft Research with bold claims of scaling up to a billion tokens and beyond, maybe even containing the entire internet in context. And LongNet is not the first of its kind. There are many other people trying to solve this problem because this is a real serious problem. This is what is stopping everyone from having larger contexts and everyone wants larger contexts. <laughs> this is the thing everybody wants and Arguably, LongNet is the, the one of many in a long line of attempts going back to probably long former, which was at the end of like 2020. This LongNet paper from Microsoft, despite boisterous claims of containing the entire internet in context and having a billion tokens, it is interesting because it does seem to solve at least two of those three aforementioned issues. You could theoretically fit a 1 billion context length into a, something like an 8 uh, H100 X, SXM build. Ooh, let's say that five times fast. And, and the actual processing speed could be comfortable depending on the parameters that you set for this dilated attention. And it would be comparable in speed to a transformer with say 8 or 16K context. So how is Microsoft actually doing this. Essentially, my understanding is it's attention as we know it, but context is split into segments and sparsified as needed to fit. <laughs> attention is calculated in parallel in this way, in those segments, and then it's combined into a final output. You really can just, and that's what they're calling dilated attention, by the way. You really can just tune your exact needs and wants by specifying segment size and sparsity. In this way, I think that long net is very important because right now we just don't have a great way to scale out larger context windows, even if we weren't having this sort of like lost in the middle problem. Um, 
the computational requirements are just just too great. It's literally impossible. And Jensen can only cook up these new powerful GPUs so fast. So something like LongNet solves some problems, at least those first two issues. But what about that the final nagging issue? Even if it fits and runs fast, does it actually work? In the LongNet paper, Microsoft compares LongNets with dilated attention perplexity scores to where, and by the way, perplexity lower is better, to a sparse transformer. And we can see that in each case, LongNet is a bit better as we increase context. This paper leaves us with two major questions though. And I think probably one is the one that really matters. One complaint I've seen from people on this paper is that Microsoft only compared to typical transformers up to 32,000 tokens. You know, where's the billion token comparison? <laughs> While I do think Microsoft could have gone a bit larger than 32K, I'm not sure what model they would have used uh, without making a brand new one just for the testing purpose. And even if they did, so what? We've already seen that large context attention, as we know it, costs way too much to be practical in any way. So in terms of memory requirements and processing time, as well as just simply quality. Sure, we could compare long net giant attention uh, scores and at least see how does that extrapolate out. But it's it's unclear, you know, I guess to, to, to what end. We simply cannot reasonably expect to have a 1 million context window transformer so long as attention stays the way it is today. Unless somehow we have just a massive hardware breakthrough, which I also doubt. But then even if we did, we would have the lost in the middle problem. Now, the second question, of course, is what about that third problem, that lost in the middle problem? How is the quality? While we can process a billion tokens, are we just going to have that lost in the middle type of problem again? I suspect we probably will. Sure, we can have a billion tokens and then segment them and give them lots of sparsity and stuff it, stuff it even into a single H100 card. But will the quality be any good? <laughs> Dilated attention, while slightly better on average in perplexity when compared to typical attention, still very obviously and clearly deteriorates at similar rates to typical attention, even just between the relatively small ranges of 8 and 32k. And I say relatively small if we're going to say, hey, we can do this up to a billion tokens. So if you're already deteriorating significantly between 8 and 32k, I just have to ask, well, why or how could this actually make it even remotely close to 1 billion parameters or even 1 million parameters? <laughs> so that question still remains. Because if you really think about this sort of dilated attention, at least to me, it sounds a whole lot like, okay, yeah, we're going to segment and we're going to uh, calculate in parallel. I think that sort of makes sense because then you would and then you ch kind of chain it all together and then you compute attention one more time. I can sort of see that working, but it sure sounds a whole lot like why don't we just make attention every nth token, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and then just slowly kind of use convolutions up. Um, I, you know, maybe that works. But I just don't, you know, it's like, it just imagine a really simple example of, okay, well, let's just, if we want to fit a billion tokens, we can have attention be every nth token where n equals 1 million. Well, okay, that's fine, but you're losing a ton of data. You still have to, you have to find some way of compressing attention. One thing is for certain though, current attention has to change before we can see any improvement in the realm of context windows for transformer-based large language models. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts below and check out the Neural Networks from Scratch book at nnfs.io if you want to learn more about neural networks and how they work. I will see you all in the next video.